Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to use the um, new Ken Oliver liquid metals, and I got these from Rubbernecker, Rubber Stamps, and we're also going to use um, a stamp by Rubbernecker, and in the video description I'm going to put a coupon code, I can't remember what it is on the top of my head, but they've got an awesome coupon code for my viewers, and also they offer free shipping on orders over 35. So if you are curious in any of the products I'm using, there would be a great uh, place to get it. We're also going to use some of the new Color Burst colors. Those are also the Ken Oliver color bursts. And um, there's actually two different versions of the liquid metals. There are the um, precious alloys, which have more of you like your colored, um, your colored ones. And I use those in this demonstration here. And you can see it's got really bright colors and really kind of fun and kind of springy looking. Lots of like, you know, kind of primary colors, pure, more pure colors. And then there's the heavy metals, which are more like your, um, metallic colors and they tend to be a little more opaque so actually when you use them on black you get a really cool look i apologize for the glare there but um i tried the uh the what were they called the um the precious alloys on black and all i could see was like the silver mica in there or the pearly mica and in the um on the heavy metals i could actually see copper and gold and mica and all those distinct colors which is, i think they're just i think it's because the mica is colored and over here it's like the uh, the binder is colored um and it all is like the pearly micro mica in it so we're gonna try a couple different techniques and um hopefully i'll have some new ideas to do backgrounds and then the rubber stamp set that i used i just decided to do um and just some stamping with markers on cardstock just because it was kind of fun so we're going to start off i think for i'm going to show you one technique i'm going to show you how to make this background then i'm going to show you this metallic background just because the techniques for this and this are the same i just think it looks a little bit better with this um and i think that these uh, alloys look better on just white cardstock so what we're going to do first is ink up our stamp but we're going to ink up our stamp with um these this little set comes with a background and a foreground and what i did was i figured out um, where the stamps would line up and I just made a little mark on each of my stamps there so I could line them up easier you don't have to do that but I find that very helpful and then I'm gonna take these pigments here and I'm actually gonna use them as ink on my stamp because these are liquid they're not powder like the um, color burst I should have opened that up before and I'm gonna put some of that put a couple drops of the blue right on here it doesn't take a lot and I'm going to do that and then add some color burst powders. And I've got some ultramarine blue here. I'm just tapping a little bit because I don't want too much. I just do a little puff. This is super concentrated, so try not to go overboard. A little bit of this turquoise. I like the applicator bottles these come in. We'll have enough here, probably enough here on the stamp to stamp it multiple times on our paper. And maybe some lime green because that's really pretty. Oh, that see a lot came out on that one. I don't know if you can see it, but it, there's quite a little pile there. And then I'm going to use a damp brush. Now it's wet here. I'm going to squeeze off the extra water because I don't want, if you get it too wet, it's going to bead up. But I didn't want to, I, I wanted to use every bit. I didn't want to put it on a palette and then have some, you know, hanging around in a palette. So you can see that lime green is so pretty. I just love the metallic look there. And I figure if you're going to invest in these products, because they're a little expensive, you might as well find um, as many uses as possible for them. Okay, so we've got that spread around. I'm not going to rinse my brush off because there's still a lot of pigment in there that I might want to use. I'm going to spritz it with water and then I'm going to stamp it. Let's stamp it uh, right there. I'm going to give it another spray because I have quite a bit of pig pigment in there still. I'm going to turn it stamp it over there very nice and let me see if i can get some of the excess off my brush there so we don't waste a drop i don't like to waste anything i know you guys don't either because you watch my channel another spritz we'll stamp it up there and you know what i think we can get a couple little little bitties on there okay so there we have a nice background started and i just have some baby wipes i'm just going to wipe off my stamp in between because i'm going to use this i'll probably use this it's just a good idea to clean your stamps so <laughs> i might not use it again right right away um, i'm going to blast this really quick with my heat tool okay you don't need to super dry it but i just wanted to kind of lock that stuff in there and now i'm going to use these other colors here um now this one is metallic mandarin mandarin so it's kind of like an orange we have and i shake them up because there's some um kind of like mica 
pigments in there and you want to make sure they're not just all at the bottom and you're just getting the liquid you want to get all of it do a little purple and I'm just putting a like little drop see that it's not very much let's do a little of this rose and I don't know if I'll put the green and blue down yet I'm gonna see how how it how it goes first and I'm just using a little brayer just because I can kind of control where I put everything a little bit better when I do that this isn't my favorite brayer honestly but I like that it's small it's my smallest brayer and I really like that orange I think I want a little more orange and you can just do one color at a time if you like um, where'd that pink go? I think I want a little more pink almost making some kind of like plaid design. So I'm not going to show you these colors on the black. I'm going to show you the other colors on the black because these colors I didn't think were all that fantastic on the black. So see all those pretty colors that we have there. And usually Michael looks really good on black metallic, but you can barely see it there. It's just you see a little bit of a texture, almost looks like a granite, which I could use for something, but it looks way prettier on this. And um, let's see, we also have the green and the blue. I'll do a little bit of the blue. I don't want a ton of it because I just want to show you there. I like how these colors are like really sheer. They almost look like organza. They give you that same like organza shimmer. So, um, so that's kind of cool. And this is the green. I'll just this is the same color I was using on the stamp, so I don't think it will show up that well. Oh, there you go. It does add a nice little glaze over it. But even though I've been going over and over, I'm not really getting any mud. You can see the beautiful shimmer in there. So I think that's really kind of cool. Okay, so now something that I did on some of these flowers is I actually stamped over them with a white ink pad because that kind of made them um, a little more opaque. So I think I might do that on a couple of these. So I'm going back in with this. That's why I cleaned off the stamp because I wanted to use a white, white ink pad. And a little trick here, if you ever get those white ink pads and they're just awful, you know, if you've ever bought a white ink pad, a lot of them are awful. What I did was I just took some um, white gouache, water color gouache and um, put it on there and just kind of worked it in with the with the back of a spoon and then stamped it and if it was good I just left it if not if it wouldn't kind of release I added a little glycerin you get it at the pharmacy and it worked so well and it's like my favorite white ink pad now even though it was like a dollar at AC Moore it was just a cheapo because I was able to revive it it just um, it made it work so well and you can kind of see there how it's got a little more body I'm gonna do that one over there I think I'm gonna wipe my ink pad because it did pick up I think a little a little ink there so just a little quick tip for you because white ink pads a lot of them just never dry and they're kind of a pain sometimes and this way you can actually get your money's worth and then you never have to buy ink again because you just make your own because you're frugal because after you spend 27 dollars on a set of these beautiful metallic paints you're going to want to save a few bucks somewhere <laughs> you know it's crafter problems okay set that aside now I already stamped out my um, my big backgrounds. I recommend doing this with a lot of your stamps. You know, when you make a mask, then um, after I'm done with it, I'm just going to put them right inside this this container and keep it with it. That way, I'll never have to cut a mask again. So that way, I can um, do some stamping here. I'm going to use some navy. Hopefully, it's dark enough. I uh, thought I had a reinker for this. It turns out I didn't, so I used some of my uh, Doc Martin Radiant watercolors. I'm hoping it is dark enough. All right, I'm gonna stamp right on here. And I just find it really, like this part of the stamp, I just find it really easy to line that up. So that's why I drew that little shape there on both of my stamps, just to kind of make some like little makeshift registration marks because they're not clear so I need to I do that it just helps me out it might help you out too I just used a sharpie and um, that shouldn't hurt anything all right I'm so excited about this I was so, so much fun playing with this technique okay we're gonna get that right there oh love it I just so pretty okay so we're gonna do the one back here we could do those two right now before we get too carried away before we get too carried away, what am I saying? That one, I can't really see where I'd stamped. So I'm going to have to fudge that one a little bit because that eh, looks pretty good. Because <laughs> I don't remember exactly where. There we go. That one I could see. There we go. And then I'm going to throw my masks down. 
And I know we went over masking in a stamp school, so if you don't, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't know what the heck I'm doing here, you've never cut a mask before, check out last week's stamp school episode about masking, and I think it will become very clear to you. Those masks don't want to stick very well because my background's still a little damp, but it's not a big deal. And actually, if I decided I want to have a little more ink on there, I can go in with my markers. If they're darker, add a little bit more. Same color family, won't hurt a thing. And then I want to line up right there. There we go. Okay. So that's kind of a fun, easy background to do. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so then if you want to do something like this, because that's kind of pretty too. I'll show you how to do that. It's the same technique if you want to do this or the orange flower. I figured might as well just um, just show you that. Uh, we're going to start off, I like to start off with the background, some people like to start off with the foreground, that's totally fine, it doesn't really matter. I like to use um, watercolor markers, and you can use any brand, honestly. I've got, um, I feel like this one could be a little wetter. This is a Pit Big Brush, which is actually an India ink marker, but it is water-based, so it works just fine. I feel like, though, it's a little dry. I'm just going to grab see if that one's any juicier. Yeah, that's juicier. This is just really light. And I take my lightest color and I go over the entire flower. And this is actually my favorite method for using the Rubbernecker watercolor flowers. I dish so pretty. And I just kind of dab on with a medium color. I try to get those kind of petal lines in there. And then I'll go in with my dark, dark color in there. Just here and there, I'll add in a little bit of purple, because I like purple. And then just to make sure that everything is going to look watercolory and all my ink is wet, I'm going to give it a little spritz. I usually spritz it about eight inches away. And then I'm just going to grab a scrap of cardstock. And you don't need to use watercolor paper, honestly, for this. You can use, this is cheap Walmart Georgia Pacific cardstock. Same, that's, that's what I use for the other stuff too, same thing. Okay, and then you get that pretty watercolor look. You do want to dry it. And then when you stamp over this, something that's really pretty is you can use embossing, you can use an embossing ink and embossing powder. That's really pretty. Uh, or you can just use regular dye based ink, and that's what I'm going to do right now. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to use this because I have it right here. But experiment. Figure, you know, the more different ways you can use your products, the uh, the more useful they'll be. Yeah, that made sense. <laughs> The more different ways you can think about using your products, the uh, the happier and more satisfied you'll be with them. And then there we have that. And then I just cut around it with my scissors. I didn't have a die. I just cut around it easy as pie. And the great thing about using scissors is that if you're not lined up perfectly, just cut where it go. Cut where your marks are and don't fret about it. Now, probably at this, because I do like to have a darker center, what I would do... Let's see if I have any... Oh, look at that. I still have some... Uh, that's kind of cool looking. It looks like an old... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, silk screen. I can go in and just use that dirty brush, add whatever I want, or I can just pick up some color from my ink pad, add a little color in there just to define it, but really I'm not going to go crazy about it, I'm just going to be adding a little bit of shadow, and then trim it out and adhere it to a card. Okay, the other technique I wanted to show you um, is the cool background on black, and this was a technique I have to attribute to Judy Kins. Um, I met her at a stamp show, I think it was the first stamp show I went to, but I think I saw this one at the second stamp show I'd ever gone to before she stopped coming this far east. Um, and it was such a fun technique, I just absolutely loved it. So what I'm gonna do here is put these liquid metals, put a few drops of each color onto my black cardstock. You don't have to use all the colors, but I figured this will just be kind of fun so you can see what they are. Um, I really like the warmer colors. I think they show up a lot better on the black, like the golds and the coppers. But they all, actually, they're all very lovely, and I'm really thinking this would be fun to, like, because um, they dry really well, which is surprising. I think this would be really fun to do um, on, like, a uh, frame, like, to kind of paint a frame, a color, and then rub it down with these, or brush just brush it on and let it dry. I think it would be really nice and then you could just do a clear wax over it or something like that. I mean I just like to look at different ways to use my stuff. I'm very excited about this. I've had a lot of fun playing with this. I hope I'm not like you know blowing your mind with the fast talk. Okay so now I'm just gonna 
Look at that, isn't that pretty? And I love how it's not making mud, even though I've got so much color on here. And you know what I think I'm gonna do? Cause I wasn't like crazy about that. This, this one over here, I think I'm gonna wipe off my excess on there and do something else with it. Cause I didn't like how this stuff was so transparent. Okay, so then to get a cold texture in here, um, I'm gonna grab that same stamp I just used. I will wipe off the blue anyway. I don't think you'd be able to see it cause it's transparent, but I'm gonna wipe it away. And then stamp it, little twist. Isn't that cool? Stamp it, little twist, stamp it, little twist, stamp it, little twist, stamp it, little twist, stamp it, little twist. I just think that is so cool. What do you think? And you know, as you can see, I didn't use a ton of product. I think I'll just gonna stamp, do the same thing over here, see what happens. Cause that's what I did originally. And I didn't, I almost didn't try it with a heavy metal set because I didn't think it was gonna show up, but it, it showed up a lot better. And there with that extra layer, it looks pretty cool. It almost looks like a seventies countertop or something. You know, the black countertops that are like the faux granite. Um, but you know, I just think that's a really, really fun technique. So then I did use these colors um, on this background with the same technique I just showed you with this background and these colors. Actually, this is the one I just made, it's still wet, but you could see, um, you know, you can alter your colors and do the exact same thing. Like I used the iron oxide liquid um, stuff with the fuchsia and tangerine color bursts and got my stamping ink with that and you know did the same process but you know using different materials can give you a whole different look but absolutely try what you have maybe you have some metallic inks already try that see if that works if not these are really fun to play with they are the liquid metals as i said the ones that were more opaque that i used on the black that really stood up they are the heavy metal set so on the back they're going to say heavy metals Okay, and then um, and I'll put a link in the video description. Um, and then the precious alloys are the ones that looked really pretty on the white paper, really colorful and transparent, but didn't show up very well on the black. Um, and then these, I just use markers. Like I just, I did this same one, that did this the same way as I did the blue one. I just used shades of orange and yellow. So some fun stuff that you can craft with. I hope you try it. It was so much fun to make this video for you and to have a little crafty play date today. So I hope you get inky with me and until next time, happy crafting.